truth of their heritage. And realize this is their book. This is written about their family. You can easily see it from beginning to end that this is about one people. One people that the nations can cleave to and become reborn and become an Israelite. He's not the God of the Gentiles, the Hudim, the Greek. He's only the Elohim of Israel. He says that the Hebrew Israelite movement is reaching out the Christian church. Isn't that the biggest, most hypocritical comment you've ever heard in your entire life? Christians have done nothing but leech off the heritage of another people. They, they practice replacement theology and put themselves as the people of the book. Yahweh has a people that he was sent to. And it's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, his firstborn son. That's who Yeshua was sent to. I, I am not sorry to tell you that Abraham, the father of the faith, was not a Christian. He was a Hebrew. I am in no way apologetic to tell you that his son Isaac also was a Hebrew. And I am no way going to tiptoe around the fact that Yaakov, Jacob, was a Hebrew whose name was changed to Israel as one that struggles with Yah and overcomes, who gave birth through polygynous marriage to the twelve tribes of the house of Israel. Because I thought we had nobody Hebrew Israelite commandment keepers until just about 30 so 20 years ago. I thought, according to Vocab alone, this is some relatively new movement. Well, let's keep going. The Pasaginians also spelled Pasaginians were a religious sect which appeared in Lombardy in the late 12th or now 13th century and possibly appearing much earlier in the East. The Summa Contra Hereticos ascribed to the Prepositinus of Cremona describes the Pasaginians as retaining the Old Testament rules of circumcision, kosher foods, and Jewish holidays. In other words, they observe the law of Moses, accept and respect to sacrifices, and thus were given the name circumcisi. There's another name that we got for these people. So it's all over history because of the arrogancy of the Catholic Church to preserve these records. And I thank y'all for it. Because now you have these self-prescribed scholars and teachers like Vocab Malone that don't know anything about historical documentation concerning the commandment keepers. Alright, so this video is about black people and how they're actually superior, not just physically and all this and, and genetically and all that stuff, but actually they're the chosen people. Not all black people, but a lot of them, and even I could say I don't know if I could say most of them, but many of them. Specifically the people that are living in America, and specifically the people who have been sent all over the earth on slave ships, those people are superior, even in the Most High's eyes himself, because those people are the Israelites. And there's a scripture that says, not only it says if you bless them, you'll be blessed, there's also one that says, you have to cling to them or you can't even be saved. So for one, that means acknowledging who they are, obviously. And for two, it means reading even their own scriptures because these scriptures are not for everyone. They're for them, and if you wanna follow after their their God, of course he is the God of all, uh, but he's not, not all people are his people. <laughs> you see how that works? So if you wanna even be saved, you need to get in line and you need to step behind his chosen people. Okay, and the reason that this earth is gone behind Satanism, I mean, I'm sorry, racism, is because we live in a satanic world, and Satan ex exclusively hates these chosen Israelite black people more than anyone else, and he hates them and he wants to bury them. Because not only he hates them because they're chosen, but he hates them because literally, like I just explained, they are your and my hope to be saved. Of course, we don't need them, but salvation is for them and it's for all who cling to the truth that came down through them and for them in other words they're first you're second this is explained not only in the bible but also all of the books that should be in your so-called bible but were not allowed in by the freemasonic organizations that rule and control the earth because they don't want you to know all that truth 
but it is out there. I know it's in Baruch, I know it's in Ezra's. That's the message for this video. And again, say it again, black people, this, especially the Hebrew Israelites, the actual chosen people of the Most High, who was sent on slave ships, not for the sake of all of them, but for the sake of the many. Because just as all humans, all humans are fallen, the majority of them oftentimes did not follow after him, but he always had his Zion. He, he even always had his prophets, he always had his faithful people. But they were even sent into exile for the sake of the many. Because the Most High isn't playing around and he deals with people as a whole. So he even deals with his chosen nation as a whole. So wrapping up this video, his chosen people are the black people who were sent on slave ships. You need to bless them if you even want to be blessed on this earth. And if you even want to be saved and make it into the next earth, you need to cling to this truth. And even metaphorically and even literally cling to them. Because salvation is not for everyone. The Messiah himself said he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's a specific people. That's not everyone. That's not you or me. Uh, for most of you people watching this video. <clears throat> of course, a lot of Hebrew Israelite camps are not telling you the full truth about this. Uh, maybe because they do not know. Uh, hopefully, for their sake. You know, but what they're saying is, oh, that means no one can be saved unless you're, if you're uh, an Israelite. It's not true. The reason he said that is because this ministry begins with them. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And Yahweh shall bring you into Mitzrayim, Egypt again, with ships. And the way of which I said to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies for slaves and female slaves, and no man shall buy you. And that is what happened to the regal class of the house of Judah. And I want to give you a brief history. I won't go into it too much, but I can't just make that statement because there will be people that will push back. But I want to give you a brief history on slavery. <laughs> I was just amazed, i got to tell you. I mean... When you come to America and you talk to people about slavery, you can you, you, you talk you can talk to black people about slavery, white people about slavery, and and they'll they'll give you all this history on slavery, and it only goes back to the 16th and the 17th century, and you're like, don't they teach you the history of slavery? Why ask the bloody question? Why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century? Why are they only going that far back? They don't want you to go farther back than that. Because then you'll actually find out the truth. But from the 16th and 17th century, we'll teach you about slavery. You've got to go further back, and you've got to understand and, and question, why do they do this without, throughout the whole of America, in all the public schools, why do they only go back as far as the 16th and 17th century to talk about slavery? We've got to go further back than that. Because Islam designed infernal slavery, and then the Ashkenazi Khazars those who say they are Jews and are not are the ones that marketed it and the regal Negro nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black Africans. Because you've got to understand, the regal class of the house of Judah came down from Israel and they came into the land of the black Africans. And the black Africans resented the regal class of the house of Judah in their land because they had laws, they had customs, they had civility. And they were a regal class of Negro that came down into Africa. And later on, it was the Ashkenazi, the Islamic slave traders as well, that then worked together with the indigenous black Africans to enslave the regal house of Judah. This is what we've got to understand, but you've got to go back before the 16th century to understand the roots of it. So we're going to see as we dig into this, 
where this slavery came from because it was really a system that was very, very well crafted. There was Islamic masters and there were white Ashkenazi Khazar ship owners. There were the buyers and the sellers. And they're not going to fill you in on all of this, but really you've got a four-tier system. Number one, you have the Negro nomads that were exiled from the kingdom of Judah. Number two, you had indigenous black African hunters that resented the regal Negro nomads that had come into their territory with their own customs, with their own laws that were different and would not assimilate into their tribal culture. They were their own tribe. They were the regal house of Judah. Number three, you had Islamic trappers that worked with the indigenous black Africans to trap the regal Negro house of Judah. And then you had them sell them to the Ashkenazi ship merchants, along with many Portuguese and British Ashkenazi. Oh, it is a blessing to know the truth. Because now when upon the name of Yeshua, I know those demons are going to run. I know my circumstances are going to change. Because that is the name that is above every other name. And that name is Yeshua. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for um, taking this long time to be with me and, and rejoice with me. I hope is what you're doing. Rejoicing that the truth of, of Yahshua and Yah and you as his people, it's true. And I know you've known it. And, and I know that, that it's, it's, it's sometimes it's like, why do people believe me as a white man? But some of that is because of what's been ingrained in your minds as well, to doubt each other. So I'm not this great man, but I'm just a man coming from the people that have taught you lies, coming from the people that has degraded you, coming from the group of people that has lied to you and created this false and even put in your own minds to doubt each other. I'm coming to say that we've done that, but the truth is you are his chosen. Yahshua and Yah are the true names of God and his son. So thank you that I'm grafted in as a believer in Yeshua, and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch more and more. So, The wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha in the fifth chapter talks about how Jacob, uh, how the heathen is going to be amazed and confounded when they realize that, that the so-called black man is uh, that chosen line. Yeah. In the fifth chapter, I'm getting ready to read some verses here. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. You are going to be able to comprehend it, and you're going to be in anguish and dismay and shock. How could it be this so-called black man who's been terrorized over here for 400 years and all over the earth, really, in the four corners of the earth? How could it be? Let's read about it. Why you acknowledge who the real Israelites are? So let me ask you this. Look at this right here. Tell them what you're doing, David, Brother David. Uh, I'm just a minister for the Lord, and uh, these are these are the actual Israelites, ancient Israelites. Uh -huh. Depicted in Egypt, uh, two walls. These are uh, Assyrian captives. I believe these are probably Levite priests because their hair is cut a certain length. Uh, they Look also have black their hair locks. Look at those black images. Who's that, Daniel wrestling with that lion? With that black skin and woolly hair? I don't know. I wonder if that's uh, maybe a man in an early Christian in a coliseum. No, that's David. They said he wrestled with lions. Okay. Well, hey, but look, let me ask you this. Who are the Israelites, right? You see that? The ancient Israelites are those people that were taken uh, into slavery through Atlantic slave trade and scattered through all nations of the world. Right, okay. Slave trade. And a lot of the slaves, a very high percentage of them, came from Western Nigeria.
military imports. And in America today, you see a, a very large movement of African Americans who say that they're the real Trojan people, that they're the Trojan of Israel, they're the Judeans. You know, so what are, are they just trying to create a, an identity for themselves because they were slaves? Or is there really something here? And the answer is most likely there is something there. And most likely, maybe that they were the original Israelites, and maybe that the Jewish people today who are white Caucasian people um, came in a little bit later on. It is very important that you understand who the true Hebrews are because that anti-prophecy, lots of it, surround these individuals. I am a Gentile. I know exactly who I am, but it seems to be the one group of people in the world that have been by the rest of the world tried to be dumbed down to the fact or completely erase their history uh, from history is the African American people so called that are scattered throughout the nations. Now please understand that not every single black person is a true Hebrew but it is those that are under the curse of Deuteronomy 28 and you'll be able to tell by the time that I'm done giving you this information in this video who the true Hebrews are and you may be one of them. I've been reading all the comments, all the comments, good and bad, and I just feel like there's a few things maybe I need to clarify, so I just wanted to do that. First of all, I wanted to let you know that I was not trying to teach in my video. I know that the women are not supposed to be teaching. I mean, the Bible says that let the women remain silent in the churches. So when you see these women preachers, I really don't know how they justify that because the Bible's pretty cut and dry. So I just, I'm sorry if I offended anybody. I'm sorry if it came across that way. That's not what I was trying to do. All I was trying to do was just get this information that I've learned out there. So I'm sorry, like I said, I'm sorry if I offended anybody. I, that was not my intention. Um, like I said, I was trying to get this out there to everybody. And as far as waking up the white race, I'm not sure about that, honestly, because the comments that I have gotten from the white race have been pretty bad. People call me every name in the book, telling me to go kill myself, telling me to get AIDS and die. I mean, that's just the most horrible thing that you can say to any human being. So it's kind of discouraging, actually, because I cannot be the only white person on the face of this earth that feels this way. I mean, it's, there's got to be somebody else out there. What I'm about to tell you is that the Israelites, so-called Jews that are living in Israel today, are not the real Israelites. The real Israelites are the black and brown people of the world. What happened was when the black people that were the true Israelites, the brown people that were the true Hebrew Israelites, fell from God's word as it is written, were cursed. So what happened was Rome came and sacked that land and they all fled. They went up all around the place, all around up north, south, east, west, but mostly, mostly down into Africa. They lived there for a little while in the wilderness until they were taken by slave ships to the Americas. Shalom to everyone, to the children of Israel, to the 12 tribes, to the saints of the Most High. Um, I got this book when I found out the truth of who the true Hebrews were. It wasn't enough for me to just know. I felt it was my duty to go in and truly study their history and what they endured. Because I have a, a hard time with those of you with white skin saying, it's in the past, so it doesn't matter. So my question to you 
white people is what are you proud of? What are you proud of? I'll say now, denounce the color of your skin, denounce your flesh. And um, I'm going to read some out of this book. It's called Into Egypt Again with Ships, A Message to the Forgotten Israelites, Elisha J. Israel. And I recommend it to anyone who wants the truth of who the true Hebrew Israelites are. And this is an amazing, amazing book. Um, it's only about 150 pages, but it goes into history, it goes into scriptures. Um, so, to those of you with white skin that say slavery doesn't matter, my first question is, it doesn't matter. Why did the white man go through so much trouble to hide who the true chosen are? The true Jews, according to the Bible, you can check it in the Bible, you can read Job 30, 30 and some other places. They have never been white. They have been people of color. And they have not stopped in Ethiopia. They were in West, in Ethiopia, Sudan, and they have settled in West Africa. From West Africa, they have been taken as a slaves to America. Brothers and sisters, blacks of America, it's you. You are the true Hebrews. You are the true Hebrews from the Bible. America going to do everything, going to invest as much money as it has, going to fight as much wars as they, as they can, going to invite as much weapons as they can, just to hide this away from you. Going to take Israel, going to bring white people here, and to tell you these are the Jews, going to do, going to kill you, going to kill Arabs, going to mistreat white people like this guy, just to tell you this lie. That, that you are nobody and we are the Jews with all the history and so on. It had been deleted your history. You don't know who you are. Don't forget about it. This is why it has, America has been taking your history away. Never to find out that it's all about you. Now, to the real Hebrew Israelites, you're going to refer to Deuteronomy 28, 64-68. He is reprimanding and passing judgment on the Israelites for the wrongs that they did, and they did wrong, and they get their judgment, and they have suffered it. He sent them into ships, by ships, into bondage, started, so they would never know their land again, it says, that they will never know who their God is, and God shall turn his back on them. They never knew who they were. Jews today happen to have heritage and they know who they are, but it violates everything that we're going to look at in your scriptures of Deuteronomy, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Zechariah. Because it's not supposed to be established by man. It's supposed to be established by God and he said he would wake them up. You're going to find in Jeremiah and Zechariah that these people who were taken by ship into bondage and scattered throughout the lands, never to be seen again, Never to know who they are again would not be awoken until the end times. Today, my friends, we are in the end times. How on earth did you manage that? I knew you were scared. Toby's got a gift for horses. Real special touch, Mason. Get back in the field. Uh, that's very hard, What did you think of Toby's special touch with the horse? It was astonishing, no? It's just a walk, sir. Horses is probably smarter than an African. Oh, God, man. The Semites brought horses to Africa. Horses is probably smarter than an African. Oh, God, man. The Semites brought horses to Africa. Semites brought horses to Africa. 
Egyptians more than 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. It never fails to amaze me that you've traveled the world, Spaulding, and seen... ...to know nothing about it. shutdown is not over. Do not be fooled into thinking that all is going to be well. If you do not take heed to this video, you will one day wish that you had the opportunity to go back and actually pay attention to these kinds of contents that were being featured online. The content that was being published while there was yet freedom to do so. And your life will be at risk because you did not take heed to the information that was being shared to you when there was still time available.